I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Welcome to episode 144 of the Burning Bush Podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me. Today, we're reading the New Testament book of Luke, chapter 1, with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, and I'm smoking the Ferio Tego Metropolitan Host Maduro in the Hobart 5x50 Vitola. So let's go to the Ferio Tego website and see what they have to say. Ferio Tego LLC is a premium cigar and accessories company launched in 2021 by Michael Herklotz and Brendan Scott. In addition to their flagship Ferio Tego brand, the company also owns the Timeless Collection, Metropolitan Selection, and Epoca brands of premium cigars as well as the Ancora Accessories brand. Ferio Tego's cigars are manufactured by hand in the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and Honduras. Ferio Tego is distributed by Davidoff of Geneva, USA, throughout the United States. Ferio Tego was named 2021 Brand of the Year by Cigar Dojo and New Company of the Year by Half Wheel. The Metropolitan Host Maduro is one of the best-selling premium cigar experiences on the American market. Smooth, mellow, and delicious with a broadleaf Maduro wrapper. And again, the wrapper is Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro. Binder is Honduran, and the fillers are also Honduran. And the Vitolas are Hampton, 7x50, the Hyde, 6x60, and the Hobart, 5 by 50. That is the Metropolitan Host Maduro by Ferio Tego. So let's go ahead and get into this week's reading of the book of Luke in chapter 1. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV, and the introduction to the book of Luke. The Gospel of Luke is in the form of a letter to Theophilus. This Greek name means friend of God. It might refer to a specific individual, or Luke could have been writing to the church at large, to all who consider themselves friends of God. Theophilus might have been Luke's patron, a wealthy person responsible for funding the writing, copying, and distribution of Luke's gospel and the book of Acts. Luke wrote after having carefully investigated all the facts about Christ, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and Luke documents Christ's life from before his birth through his ministry, death, and resurrection. Jesus carried out his ministry in the power of the Holy Spirit, announcing the good news of salvation. 
He showed numerous times his compassion for the poor and the outcast. He fulfilled prophecy and carried out his purpose, to seek and to save the lost. Luke gives the fullest account of Christ's birth, and only Luke records the parables of the Good Samaritan and the Prodigal Son. Luke, a physician and a colleague of Paul, probably wrote this account between 60 and 85 AD. He also wrote Acts. And Spurgeon comments on the book of Luke, To get people to come to Jesus as they are is not easy. To get them to give up the idea of preparing, to get them prepared to come without preparing, to get them ready to come just as they are, this is the hardest part of our work. Only the grace of God, working mightily through the Word, by the Spirit, will prepare people to come to Christ. Prepared by being unprepared so far as any fitness of their own is concerned, the only fit state in which they can come is that of sinking themselves, abandoning all idea of helping Christ, coming in all their natural impotence and guilt, and taking Christ to be their all in all. And Luke chapter 1 reads, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word have delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now while he was serving as priest before God when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. For your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord. And he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the Spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Spurgeon comments on verse 17, And he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous to make ready for the Lord a prepared people. John was the herald of Christ. He was to prepare the way for the coming king. But from this text, it appears that he was to do more than that. He was not only to make the road ready for the Lord, but he was also to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That was a great work, a task in which he would require strength and wisdom greater than his own. He would need the Spirit of God, who was to be given without measure to the coming one. To get people to come to Jesus just as they are is not easy. To get them to give up the idea of preparing, to get them prepared to come without preparing, to get them ready to come just as they are, this is the hardest part of our work. Only the grace of God, working mightily through the Word, by the Spirit, will prepare people to come to Christ. Prepared by being unprepared so far as any fitness of their own is concerned, the only fit state in which they can come is that of sinking themselves, 
abandoning all idea of helping Christ, coming in all their natural impotence and guilt, and taking Christ to be their all in all. And back to Luke verse 18. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me, to take away my reproach among people. In the sixth month, Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. And Spurgeon comments on verses 49 and 50. Because the Mighty One has done great things for me, and his name is holy, his mercy is from generation to generation on those who fear him. Notice how Mary quotes scripture. Her mind seems to have been saturated with the word of God, as though she had learned the books of scripture through and had them by heart in more senses than one. And isn't it insightful that Though the Holy Spirit was speaking by her, he quoted the older scriptures in preference to uttering new sentences. 
what honor he put on the Old Testament by so continually quoting it in the New Testament, even as the Lord Jesus also did. Let us, too, prize every part of God's Word. Let us soak in it until we are saturated with scriptural expressions. We cannot find any better ones, for there are none. And back to Luke, verse 51. He has shown great strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months, and returned to her home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him Zechariah after his father. But his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he wanted him to be called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, Blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. And that's the end of today's reading in the book of Luke. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, as well as today's cigar, also Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals, Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless, and the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. And if you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at the burningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless.